Hey everybody, welcome back to the Light Side Music Reactions. Today we've got another new band for the channel. Um, this is sort of a new band for me. I don't think I've heard any of the material that they have uh, released in this current iteration. But I have heard members of this band before uh, when they performed with uh, earlier bands. But uh, to just get everything out of the way and tell you right off the bat who we're talking about. Uh, before we do that, quick shout out to Eric. I think it's Eric Eisenhart that has been requesting that I uh, react to uh, a lot of different uh, 70s and 80s rock bands. But the problem is I am familiar with most of the material that they put out. And so I've been ha struggling to find uh, you know something from that era that I could react to uh, that would fill the request that he's been asking for. But, um, you know, of course, uh, back then, uh, one of the big bands was, uh, uh, I want to say Led Zeppelin, that's not right, um, uh, Leonard Skinner. But anyway, <laughs> brain fart right there, sorry. But uh, yeah, uh, Leonard Skinner was a popular band, uh, Southern Rock, and uh, kind of crossed over into country a little bit, into uh, classic rock, um, band from the 70s. And I think we all know the story um, about, uh, you know, how they had the tragic, tragic plane crash and everything. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, who we're reacting to today is the band Van Zant, uh, which is composed of uh, uh, Donnie Van Zant and Johnny Van Zant, who are the brothers of Ronnie Van Zant, who was the original lead singer for Ze Led Zeppelin that was killed in that car or in that plane crash. But anyway, um, uh, let's see, Johnny took over as a lead singer for Led Zeppelin when they reunited in the set in the eight, late 80s. I think it was around 86, 87. Um, and so, uh, and also Donnie uh, was the lead singer and vocalist for uh, 38 Special. And so some of you might remember some of 38 songs. So caught up in you, baby girl. That's 38 Special. But anyway, um. They got together and they formed their own band called Van Zant. Obviously, you got two band members with the same last name, uh, just like with uh, uh, Van Halen. You get two band members with the same last name. You're gonna go ahead. Actually, there's only one Van Halen. It's Eddie Van Halen. Never mind. <laughs> but uh, you know how bands name themselves after a band member. You know, the, even you know Van Halen wasn't even named after the lead singer. Uh, go figure. But, uh, yeah, they named their band Van Zant, and uh, they just released a new song. But anyway, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, um, October 20th, 1977 was when the, that plane crash happened. Uh, you know, the generation before that was the day the music died with the Big Bopper and, and uh, Richie Valens and the others that were killed in that plane crash. And then the next huge event like that that really affected a lot of people uh, was the plane crash that killed... Uh, like Ron, Ronnie Van Zant, of course, lead singer for uh, Leonard Skinner, and also bandmates Steve Gaines and Cassie Gaines, and assistant road manager Dean Kilpatrick, pilot Walter McCreary, and co-pilot William Gray. And uh, the rest of the band was also seriously injured in the plane crash, but survived. Uh, and then, uh, of course, Johnny was or not Johnny Ronnie was only 29 years old uh, when the plane crashed, and he was killed. But anyway, uh, Van Zant, uh, which is composed of by his brothers and we're, who we're reacting to today, uh, first recorded in, 19, in the 1980s before disbanding, and they had a southern rock type of uh, feel. And then uh, they got back together in 1998 and recorded two albums, switching their focus to country music. And so I'm kind of interested to see what direction they take with their, this new album. And it's released on the same album as uh, Striper, uh, I think it's their same label, uh, the same label that Striper's on now, because uh, the channel that this video is on is the same channel that Striper's latest song that I reacted to was on. But anyway, um, you know, recently uh, we had the plane crash with uh, um, the uh, the Southern Gospel group that we were talking about a couple weeks ago, the Neelands. Uh, but anyway... Um, uh, you know, with the plane crash with the Neelands, uh, we just, you know, just in recent uh, memory. And uh, now, uh, with this video coming up, reminds me of, uh, uh, you know, the plane crash uh, with uh, Leonard Skinner. Yeah, Leonard Skinner. I keep wanting to mess up their name. But anyway, um, 
that's enough talking. Let's just go ahead and get into the video. Uh, this is uh, Van, Van Zant's new song that they just released. It's called Jesus Christ. So that's interesting. I'm hopefully, I'm hoping that they don't use it blasphemously. That this is actually, you know, a, uh, you know, a, 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 a foray into maybe, uh, you know, the Christian side of country music or southern rock. Uh, I, I imagine that they would not uh, be like blatantly, um, you know, disrespectful like that. So uh, I am optimistic before hearing this that it's going to be good. Um, but uh, one way to find out, let's check it out. This is Van Zant performing JC. Jesus Christ. Nice heavy beat there. It's got the rock feel. I have a feeling this is going to be country. It's going to be the southern rock. Okay. All right. I'm pleased. <laughs> that was a little bit of my, my heart was racing there for a minute. You know, wondering where, what direction they were going to go. Uh, it's got the Southern rock feel, uh, nice sound into the, uh, to the song, uh, musically, uh, and lyrically, obviously they're talking about Jesus, uh, the crucifixion. Uh, they hung him up on the cross. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're talking about the crucifixion and, uh, the crucified innocent man. Uh, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's Jesus' words on the cross. So, whew, they're being respectful. Whew. All right, let's get back into it. All right, that right there reminds me of 38 Special. You know, the, fir the first uh, line as they began the song uh, reminded me of uh, Led, or I want to say Led Zeppelin. Why do keep people want to say Led Zeppelin? Um, uh, Leonard Skinner. They both start with L, I guess. Two words. Anyway, they keep reminding me of Leonard Skinner. Uh, but then uh, right there, as soon as they hit that chorus and the harmony, uh, reminded me of 38 Special, which, of course, one of the brothers used to be the lead singer for 38 Special. So uh, you can feel the influence uh, from the their past musical ties coming in here. Ooh, blood pouring out of his eye. Okay, yeah. That's true. Uh, tears run down his face. There's blood pouring out of his eyes. That made me think for a second. Was there blood pouring out of his eyes? Yes. Um, uh, in the Garden of... Not, not during the crucifixion, but in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying. Uh, it says in the uh, Gospel of John that uh, when he was praying that he was sweating uh, drops of blood. Uh, so I don't know if it was uh, necessarily uh, coming out of his eyes, but he was definitely sweating blood. And so that's where they get that line. Okay, very cool. Um, you know, they're, they're taking it personally. They're saying, he is my Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and so they're talking, you know, in a positive way about this. And so I'm glad this is the direction they're taking with it. And once again, uh, musically there, as, uh, you know, they were ending the chorus, you had the choir singing in the background. And that was a staple with Led Zeppelin, uh, Led Zeppelin again, uh, with, with uh, Leonard Skinner again. Uh, that was a staple with their music is the the background vocals sounding like a choir in their music. And I apologize, I keep messing up the band's name. Uh, forgive me for that, please. Those of you that are huge fans, it's no disrespect on my part. It's my, I'm just having some uh, brain malfunctions tonight, uh, mixing up those two band names. But anyway, uh, yeah, it reminded me a lot of uh, 38 Special and Leonard Skinner. <laughs>
Okay, this is cool. Uh, once again, um, you know, earlier they started out t telling it like it's a story. You know, you're viewing it as an audience from a distance. You know, this telling a story. This is something that happened years and years ago, centuries ago. And we're telling you the story uh, about what happened, almost like you're watching a movie or hearing a story, like a fairy tale, like a bedtime story sort of thing. Now they're taking it into uh, our personal lives. That it's not just an ancient story. This is something that's relevant today. Um, he made the ultimate sacrifice so we could all have eternal life. You, me, everybody that's able to hear this story, uh, to hear this song and the lyrics, uh, this was for you. Uh, he bore the sins of all mankind. And so no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, if you are a human being, uh, it's for you. All right, let's get back into it. Okay, tears running down his face. Okay, that, that, that imagery, um, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it rubs me the wrong way. It, it, it's true in a sense that he was sweating the blood, but when I think of blood pouring out of eyes, um, you know, we, we have the imagery that that invokes of anger or hatred or like, you know, there's blood pouring out of his eyes. He was like angry, yeah, but that's not the case. Um, I know that's not the, the impression they're trying to give here, but that's the picture that it puts in my mind personally. Uh, hopefully other people listening, they, they don't get that imagery that, that um, it was a thing of anger, um, but it was blood pouring out of his skin, really. Uh, but uh, um, I, I guess the, uh, talking about uh, the choice of that, the, the choice of using that word eyes, uh, face doesn't rhyme with eyes, and so they could have easily chose a different, um, a different word that would be more appropriate. Uh, the only thing it rhymes with in the chorus is the last word, Christ, and that's cleared down at the end of the song. Um, no, I, I guess it does work. Uh, the, the rhyme scheme is face, eyes, man, stand, savior, one, Christ. So it'd be A, B, C, C, B. A, B, C, C, B. Okay, so it is rhyming. That's why they do it. It's so that it would rhyme with the uh, eyes, rhymes with Christ. Okay, so I get it. That's why they're using that for the, to fit the rhyme scheme. And, uh, you know, I've commented before about how it's important to me listening to music that it rhymes. Uh, it, it just kind of grinds my teeth whenever I uh, hear... Uh, a song and it doesn't rhyme it just uh, it gets to me sort of thing so i'm glad that they are trying to make a rhyme here um but i just wish that there was a better rhyme that they could have done there to make it feel better um the, the imagery of blood pouring out of his eyes just doesn't fit for me Nice, it's rocking. We got that choir. He fought the devil and he won. Again, reminded me of a lot of the the big uh, Christian rock groups from the seventies and eighties. I think of Petra. And Striper, in particular, because that was a common theme in a lot of their music, uh, especially Petra. The album This Means War, which is a fantastic album, that was a theme all throughout that album. Um, you know, uh, he, he fought the devil and he won. Uh, Carmen, we reacted to Carmen a month or so ago. Uh, one of his songs, and that was a common theme with him, was uh, the, the spiritual battle between God and Satan. And, uh, you know, we know that in the end he wins. Um, but not only that, um, the, the story of the cross here is talking about the story of Calvary, where Jesus was crucified. It looked like he was losing. God was losing and Jesus was dying. And he did die, but then he rose from the grave. And so it was actually a victory for God, a victory for Jesus. And uh, I think that's powerful. And uh, I like the theme that they're coming up with right there, that he fought uh, the devil and he won.
Nice. All right. So they went into the instrumental, and when they did that, they almost uh, changed the, the atmosphere to praise and worship uh, by putting in the lyrics, He is our king, let the heavens sing. And then they went into the musical, uh, the musical, um, uh, the bridge there, uh, the instrumental. And so um, they kind of stepped back and said, okay, basically we've been singing this song, telling you the story. Now we're going to step back and let the heavens sing. And so they got rid of the vocals there. They just had those first two lines. He is our king. Let the heavens sing. Then they just stepped back and let the guitars take over. And, uh, you know, like the, the scripture says, uh, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a colt and uh, the, the elders of the, the, the church uh, criticized him and said, why do you allow these people to sing your praises? It's blasphemy. They didn't realize that he really was the son of God. He was uh, the, the, the son of David coming back. And when they were singing Hosanna to the king, Hosanna the highest, Jesus was worthy of that praise. But they criticized him for that. And he said, even if they they didn't sing out my praises, the rocks themselves would cry out. The trees, uh, the, all of nature would sing of the glory of God. And uh, so um, basically, I, I kind of get that imagery from here as they step back and stop singing and just let all of nature let the heavenlies, the angels in the spiritual world and all of creation around us, uh, the, where normally you wouldn't hear voices coming from, but all of nature testifying to the goodness of God and to the power of Jesus Christ. And so I love that imagery that they chose that phrase going into the instrumental section and turning it into a praise and worship session. And then they go back into the chorus here. Ooh, nice little chord there. Ooh, kind of a James Bond sort of ending there. Okay. Oh, wait, that's not the end. They're still going. I'll say there's almost two minutes left here. Okay, it's going to build up to a chorus with a choir again. Ooh, nice, and end on an acapella note. And there's a picture of the two brothers standing with the cross. Very cool. Check out the, the link in the description. It'll take you to the official music video. And actually, it's not the mu music video. 
It's the official lyric video. And um, I don't usually like lyric videos um, uh, unless I'm doing a reaction like this because then you can follow the lyric, follow along with the lyrics and analyze it. Um, typically, I'd rather listen to the official audio because it's going it's going to be the actual recording, and you're not going to have all the additional sound effects and stuff that you'll have in a music video. And then secondarily, I, I might enjoy watching the music video um, because of the powerful imagery that that often is in some of those. Um, but uh, for this case, uh, they just released this official lyric video, and uh, they did a really good job putting it together. Some nice imagery in here. Uh, so uh, definitely check out that link, and you can hear the song un un uninterrupted as they intended it to be heard, and uh, give them some support. I really enjoyed this uh, song. Um, uh, as I said, uh, it gave me a uh, uh, little bit of nostalgia, uh, the Southern Gospel feel that you would expect from uh, their original band, uh, and I'm going to mess up the name again. Leonard Skinner. And then also um, uh, from the 80s, uh, 38 Special, which was uh, also the band that uh, existed uh, from one of the band members here. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they kind of tied those together a little bit and came up with their own sound, Van Zant. And so uh, I'm interested in, uh, you know, they got this new album apparently out. Uh, I'll be checking out some more stuff on it as well. Um, lyrically, um, it was pretty straightforward, telling of the gospel story of Jesus on the cross. Uh, kind of got a, a one or two of the uh, actual facts. Not exact, but close enough to where you get the point. Um, I've done that myself. Uh, you know, singing songs, uh, cover songs through the years. Every once in a while, you'll find a song that isn't theolo theologically 100% correct. Uh, you know, people uh, do some rewrites to make things rhyme or to give poetic license a little bit. Uh, one example that I personally did is a song that my band did on our first project, Jesus Is. Uh, this song was called April Rain. And uh, there's a line in it uh, that talks about, um, talks about uh, where Jesus or where Judas uh, betrayed Jesus for uh, 30 uh, 30 pieces of dirty gold is the line that I use to rhyme the, with the word cold. Uh, actually, it was silver. It wasn't gold. It was silver. But in order to get it to rhyme, I changed the lyric. And uh, so that's where sometimes you'll have poetic license come in and things aren't going to be exact. But the, the, the important part of the message is still there. Uh, you understand there's going to be some poetic license. So when they say that there's blood coming out of his eyes, Real in real in reality, it was he was sweating the blood. Um, but anyway, uh, straightforward message of the gospel, and uh, you know turned into a praise and worship sort of thing uh, with a southern gospel flair. Uh, and there, you know, well, yeah, a little bit of southern gospel with the choir in the background, but southern rock flair. And uh, I'm on board for it. Really enjoyable. I liked it. So anyway, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And comment down below, please. Let me know what you thought of this reaction. What you think of Van Zant, uh, this song that they just uh, performed that we just listened to. And, uh, you know, do you have any other recommendations for me? Um, are there other Van Zant songs that you're familiar with that I should check out? Are there other Southern uh, rock style songs that maybe I haven't heard? Maybe it's something that's obscure that I'm less likely to have heard that you recommend that I check out. Or if there's something completely different uh, in a different genre... Uh, make those recommendations for me too. Anything that you want me to check out music-wise, uh, just go ahead and let me know. And be sure to name the artist and the song title. And if there's multiple versions out there, um, specify which one you want me to check out so that I will get the one that you want. For example, if somebody has done a live version of a song and it just outshines their studio recording and you want me in particular to hear the, the live version, Go ahead and recommend that to me and specify that that's the one that you want. Uh, but either way, um, I enjoy uh, hearing you guys' suggestions and checking out some new music and reacting to it. And uh, if you enjoy it too, uh, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when we add new material. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoy the content on this channel. And uh, hopefully I'll continue to release content that you guys all enjoy with me. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Light Side Music Reactions. Bye, everybody.